Just over a year ago, we reviewed the all-wheel drive Polestar 2, and a lot has changed since then. New entrants such as the BMW i4 offer an interesting proposition, and the price hike of the Tesla Model 3 make the Polestar 2 look a little bit more attractive. Now, there is also a big difference, at least in the Polestar lineup, and that's because there's now a single motor variant, and that's exactly what we have on review. More specifically, we've got the long range model that starts from roughly £45,000. If you don't need the bigger battery pack, it'll cost around £42,000. So, how does it compare to its rivals and indeed its all wheel drive sibling? Let's find out. So, to start off, let's talk about the most important factor, and that is its electric range. Now, the entry level Polestar 2 has a 69 kilowatt hour battery pack however the model that we have on review the long range single motor has a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack now we haven't tested the single motor smaller battery pack model however we can say that it will probably attain a lot less range than the long range model now what we'd like to say over here is that we do have the plus pack included now the plus pack adds a heat pump which in our opinion is a must for all electric vehicles at least if you're going to be living in somewhere like in the uk where it does get into cold the climate because it feeds the energy that's dissipated from the battery pack and feeds it into the climate controls in a safe manner and also means that you are effectively using less battery when it comes to heating the cabin now nevertheless the Polestar 2 long range single motor attained 250 miles to 270 miles in our mixed driving test which is certainly a very impressive score now put it into context the all-wheel drive Polestar 2 without the heat pump attain 200 miles the Tesla Model 3 standard range with a heat pump included as standard got around 230 to 250 miles the BMW i4 eDrive 40 which is also the single motor well rear wheel drive configuration attained roughly 230 to 250 miles and the BMW i4 M50 attained around 200 to 210 miles although that was on a much shorter drive suffice to say here that the Polestar 2 single motor with the heat pump installed does do a really good job however it doesn't quite take the crown in comparison to the Tesla Model 3 long range which still reigns supreme in this department where we attained a whopping 310 miles now in order to recoup energy back into the battery pack and be as efficient as possible you'll want to use regenerative braking now here the Polestar 2 has a phenomenal system it's very simple to operate you go via the infotainment system and you select between off which is coasting low which allows a little bit of deceleration or standard which provides a harsh degree of deceleration now if I were to just lift off the accelerator pedal you can see from going for around 20 miles now we get onto zero very very rapidly and I'm just going to continue just in case there's a vehicle that comes from behind now this means that one pedal driving is very much feasible with the Polestar 2 and better still it retains the mode that you've last used via the infotainment system so therefore it doesn't mean that each time you step inside the car you have to enable a B mode or something like that which is the case with the BMW i4 or the VW ID3 I just find that a little less cumbersome it's very much like the Tesla Model 3 whereby if you select everything via the infotainment system it retains the last used mode that you liked and therefore when you step inside the car the vehicle is just going to be responding to how you like it now of course being an electric vehicle you can plug it in and here the Pulse Star 2 supports up to 150 kilowatts of input via its CCS port. This means that if you find an appropriate high speed charger, you can go from 0 to 80% in a mere 40 minutes. Now, if you want to bring down the cost of recharging and if you're at home or at a workplace, the Pulse Star 2 has an 11 kilowatt onboard charger, which means you can go from 0 to 100% in just 7 hours. Find a 7 kilowatt wall box charger this will take roughly 11 hours and of course if you go via three pin socket expect it to be over 20 to 30 hours so with all of that in mind what about when it comes to performance well the single motor long range Polestar 2 has a front mounted motor that dispatches 170 kilowatts of power that equates to 228 horsepower and you'll get 329 newton meters of readily available torque now we had it tested from 0 to 60 miles an hour 
hour in 7.56 seconds. Now, while that's not too bad and not too shabby, in comparison to its competitors, specifically the BMW i4 eDrive 40, which attains a far faster figure at around 5.3 odd seconds, and the entry-level Tesla Model 3, it is quite slow. And I know, of course, when I'm saying slow at 0 to 60 at 7.56 seconds, I just feel that here, if you want that electric drive and that electric driving experience, the entry-level Polestar 2 is not going to really tick that box. Here, of course, you might want to go for the all-wheel drive model, but yet again here, the Polestar 2 dual motor is outpaced by the Tesla Model 3 long range or performance, and equally the i4 M50. Now, what really stands out in comparison to the Model 3 is the better sort of driving dynamics and the driver's feel that you get on the Polestar 2. While it isn't as nimble feeling due to the slightly larger steering wheel, given the fact that you can adjust it and make it a little bit stiffer, you just get a better connection with the road that's under you. Now again, this is a front wheel drive vehicle and here the BMW i4 and the Model 3 in their single motor configuration have a rear wheel drive configuration. And this of course does make a difference when it comes to the overall traction and the overall fun that you're gonna get when you're putting your foot down to the metal. Suffice to say here that the Polestar 2's driving dynamics are good, but they're not exactly amazing. Similarly over here, if you're comparing the overall driver's feel to the BMW i4, the Polestar 2 still doesn't quite match up. And in this segment, at least for an all-electric saloon at its price point, the BMW i4 stands heads and shoulders over the Polestar 2 and the Model 3. Similarly, the BMW i4, when fitted with its adaptive air suspension, is far better than the likes of the Polestar 2 and the Tesla Model 3 suspension system. Nevertheless here, the Polestar 2 isn't too bad, whereby it's holding its own when you're going over speed bumps or potholes around the city and likewise holds its own when you're cornering at speed on country roads whereby there's minimal amount of body roll. Leading on from driving comfort it brings us on to cabin noise. Now here the Polestar 2 is pretty much on par with a BMW i4 although there's no competition to the serene cabin experience that you can attain in the Tesla Model 3. At least not from our test where it's using objective testing via a sound meter. Now nevertheless here we're going to get on to subjective opinion and that's the audio system. Now at standard you get an 8 speaker 250 watt system and this wasn't present when we reviewed the all-wheel drive Polestar 2 a year ago. Now here the vehicle that we have on review has the plus package included which ad adds a lot of additional extras such as the heat pump which would very much suggest and of course a 13 speaker 600 watt Harman Kardon audio system which is the same that was found in the all-wheel drive Polestar 2 that we previously reviewed. Now, if you'd like a detailed review of that system do check it up on your pop banner down description below or in the pinned comments. What we'll say in a nutshell is that it doesn't quite compete with the Harman Kardon audio system found within the BMW i4 nor the premium audio system found within the Tesla Model 3 but it is still one of the best audio systems that one can attain in a saloon all-electric vehicle. On the subject of integration and also technology we have to of course talk about the Google Android Automotive OS which comes baked in on every Polestar 2. Now this this can be accessed via the 11.15 inch infotainment system that can be found at the center of the dashboard. Now this Android automotive system is among one of the best out there on the market and indeed integrates all of Google services which is phenomenal. You can also initiate voice commands to change certain settings on the vehicle and better still, it's got route planning via EV chargers, somewhat Tesla-like. We'd wish every sort of automaker would integrate such great infotainment systems and the Android Automotive OS is among one of our favorites. Better still, it also feeds information to the instrument cluster, which is a 12.3 fully digitalized display. While it can be customized to a certain degree, we suspect the map view will be the pick of most because here it gives you a great sort of indication of where you are and of course gives you navigation data through your instrument cluster. Our only complaint when it comes to technology or in terms of its integration is that there's no head-up display. It doesn't come as standard nor as an option, at least not at the time of filming nor in the UK. Now should you want to interact with the instrument cluster you've got intuitively laid out physical buttons on the steering wheel which is great to see that Polestar has still retained them. You've also got a few basic media controls towards the center console in form of a volume knob. Then you've also got the hazards as well. Now the climate controls are alas on the 
infotainment system, but nevertheless, they're very responsive and therefore it's pretty much a non-issue for a lot of individuals. Now onto some of the complaints that we've got within the cabin, and it's more in terms of a design standpoint of view, it's to do with the center console. The design, this kind of V-shaped look, does kind of stretch outwards and it just seems a little bit redundant. We wish that Polestar had kind of made it a bit more lower profile and therefore taken a little bit less space at the front of the cabin, giving you a little bit more of a spacious type of feel. Elsewhere, the center console has got a movable armrest, but it doesn't lock into place. And therefore, if you've got a heavy arm and you're putting into its middle configuration, for example, it's going to slide about. Now, on that note, we get onto storage. And here you do have a small little bay that can be found within the armrest compartment. And you'll also reveal a cup holder. And just above it as well, you do have another cup holder. Towards the front of the center console, you've got a wireless charging bay, at least if you go for the plus package. The only thing to bear in mind over here is that with our Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, the 15 watt charging bay doesn't seem to work pretty well. It seems to be a little bit hit and miss. You do also have two USB type C ports found at the front of the cabin and two type C ports found towards the rear of the cabin. Speaking about the rear of the cabin, the rear door bins are relatively small, but should suffice for smaller excursions. And at the front, you do have the glove compartments and also larger door bins, which will fit a 500 milliliter bottle alongside a small to medium sized purse and or a wallet. Now, as far as storage is concerned, we have to talk about its boot capacity. Now you've got an electric tailgate that comes fitted as standard on all trim levels, which is great to see. Now there's a button to operate it within the cabin, through your remote, or a button found just above the number plate, which can be a little bit hard to access if you're a taller individuals. You do also have the kick function, which can be quite handy when it comes to hands-free operation. Now, when it does open up, you've got this hatchback design, and this makes it a lot easier to load in and out goods, or for example, if you have pets, in comparison to the likes of, let's say, the Tesla Model 3. Now, elsewhere, you've got a large underfloor compartment storage, which is quite handy to place your charging cables or other goods, and then you've got mesh compartments found towards the side. Now, when it comes to the total capacity, you've got 405 litres with the seats up and 1,095 litres when they're folded flat. And indeed here, you do have a flat loading bay, although it should be bearing in mind, you do have a slight raised boot lip. Now, there is, of course, a front storage space as well. This is roughly 35 to 41 litres. Now, it's worth bearing in mind over here that unlike the rear, it's not electronically operated and therefore does require manual operation from within the cabin and therefore makes it a little less practical when you're using it on a day-to-day -day basis. So moving on to seat comfort, at the rear of the cabin, it's a little bit limited, although the same could be said about the BMW i4. Here, the Tesla Model 3 does a slight bit better job. And the reason behind that is because both the i4 and the Polestar 2 have a transmission tunnel, which in the Polestar 2, we just do not understand why it's present, because it's built up from the ground up as an electric vehicle. Nevertheless, Polestar have retained the transmission tunnel, and as such, it's something that they could potentially approve on on future iterations. Now, when it comes to headroom and legroom, it is limited. Limited. The same could be said about the BMW i4, whereby you can't exactly stretch out your legs. And as for headroom, if you're six foot two or six foot four, you might feel a little bit hemmed in. Now, if you don't use the center middle seat, you can reveal an armrest. And also over here, you'll find two cup holders, which are quite handy. As for the rear segment of the center console, you will find those two type C ports, which I did reference before. And then you also find the seat he heater buttons. Now the seat heaters only come included in the plus pack. And the same could be said about the panoramic glass roof, which we feel is a fantastic inclusion. And indeed here, the panoramic glass roof is not included as standard, at least not on the single motor models. And as a result means that if you do want that extra light to be shining into the cabin, you'll want to purchase that 4,000 pound option. Now it's worth bearing in mind over here that it is got UV protection, but if you want a full sunshade, then you're gonna have to purchase an additional accessory. Now moving on to the front of the cabin, the seats are semi-electronically adjustable, which means that it's quite easy to find the right sort of seating position or indeed the driving position. They're also heated and that comes as standard. If you want the heated steering wheel, however, and the windshield, you will again have to go for the plus pack. Now elsewhere, the Polestar 2, very much like the VW ID3 and the Tesla Model 3, has a pressure sensor that can be found within the driver's seat. Now this is very handy if you're a single occupant popping in and out of the Polestar 2 because you don't have to turn on or turn off the vehicle. 
However, if you have other occupants that are sat inside, specifically towards the rear of the cabin, it makes it quite cumbersome because the entire infotainment system and including the climate controls power down. As such here, the BMW i4 offers that start-start button and makes for a better proposition for those people who have families. Now on that note, getting in the Polestar 2 is very intuitive and that's because the door handles offer a traditional design. Unlike the Tesla Model 3, it doesn't take any sort of getting used to. Now as for the rear of the cabin, it's a little bit more tight to get in and out and the same could be said about the BMW i4. And this perfectly leads us on to the styling of the Polestar 2, which in our opinion looks absolutely fantastic. It's got that muscle car type of vibe towards the front, which still offers that sort of Volvo type of design. And as for the rear, it's very futuristic thanks to the tail lights that stretch the entire width of the vehicle. As for the side, it's got that sporty sort of profile with 19 inch alloys fitted as standard, although the mold that we have has got 20 inch alloys. Similarly, when it comes to the overall finish, there's a silver color that comes as standard, but if you want one of the options, such as the one that's pictured, you have to shell out £900. Now back into the driver's seat, I do want to talk about safety and visibility. And first off on the latter, it's excellent at the front and at the side of the Polestar 2. And specifically when you're cornering and therefore looking around the sides, the A-pillars aren't too thick, whereas the same couldn't be said about the Model 3. I also like the fact that Polestar have taken a bit of attention to detail and whereby they've taken away the bezel around the rear view mirrors and therefore it just makes it a little bit nicer to look at your sides. Now if you do want to reverse however the rear view window is pretty limited and the same could be said about some of its competitors. Thankfully Polestar do include a rear view camera and front and rear parking sensors as standard and therefore it takes the stress away when it comes to doing a parking maneuver. Now should you want to better the experience you can add 360 degree cameras as part of the Pilot Elite pack which comes in at £2,150. This also adds a plethora of driver assistance systems such as pilot assist, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring system, cross traffic alert, rear collision and also park assist, all of which work phenomenally well. We're particularly fond of the pilot assist and the adaptive cruise control which works a treat on the motorway. Should these systems not be of interest you'll be pleased to know that as standard the Polestar 2 comes with cruise control, lane mitigation, lane keeping aid which by the way can be permanently disabled via the infotainment system, road sign recognition and driver alert system. Now no matter which option or pack you choose, the Polestar 2 received 5 out of 5 stars on Euro NCAP's rigorous crash test, whereby it scored 92 and 89% in the adult and child occupancy tests respectively. So with all of that in mind it leads us on to our verdict, and here we would say that the best sort of configuration for the Polestar 2 is the single motor long range with the plus pack included, that is at the time of filming and within the UK. Now of course you should consider the alternatives. The BMW i4 offers the best sort of driving dynamics, at least for an all-electric vehicle of its class and indeed its price. And then if you want the class-leading infotainment system, infrastructure and the best sort of efficiency in an electric vehicle, you should definitely get the Tesla Model 3 instead. Now the Polestar 2 makes for a worthwhile alternative over the BMW and the Tesla and we intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. If you've liked this independent detail review and want to see more from myself and the channel, then definitely do drop a like, subscribe and hit that bell notification, of course, if you haven't already. As such, I've been Chris from Totally EV and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.